Hey everyone, welcome back. This is meant to be a comprehensive guide of All Things Companion, post rework part 1. Do keep in mind things may change in part 2. Note that Kubros, Kavats, Volpophilas, and Predazites are not included here today. Those, time permitting, will be saved for a future video. Also, hyper-specific setups that require a particular frame and also a particular companion are not included. These are just for general companion setups on any frame. But if you want to know all the important stuff right now, you've come to the right place. This video will cover the best companion setups, including builds, how to use, mod order importance and why, and other much lesser known useful info. Like the very next point that I will give after this introduction. I would advise using the timestamps if there are specific things you want to learn on particular companions or utility roles today. This is not an exhaustive list, but just everything I've been able to track and test so far, since there is a lot to cover. Let's dive right in. Sentinel weapon builds will be shown at the start before the companion showcase, whereas hound weapons will be shown on the relevant hound build, since hound weapons are not universal. First one, companions that use sentinel weapons, meaning moas and sentinels, benefit from galvanized mods. This does not include hounds because hounds use melee weapons which do not have galvanized mods. There is one other caveat, the weapon type must match the galvanized mods your Warframe is using. If I'm using a rifle sentinel weapon, such as Verglass, then I can only stack rifle galvanized mods if I'm using a rifle myself, such as Amprex, Dread Incarnon, etc. Sentinels are not allowed to stack galvanized mods themselves off kills, so you will always have to stack it for them. If you use a shotgun, this means you will not be able to stack galvanized mods for Verglass, since Verglass is a rifle, and vice versa if you're using a rifle but your sentinel is using a shotgun. This is mainly just important for Verglass DPS shenanigans, but this also means that yes, your sentinel benefits from gun CO, and not just galvanized multi-shot. This means every DPS Verglass I use today looks like this, but also means I will be using a rifle with them myself. Yes, sentinels reload and this cuts the time down. Yes, Banes work on sentinels. Now if you're not using a rifle, replace Galvanized Aptitude with Serration, and Galvanized Chamber with Split Chamber. Hellstrom is our main primer sentinel weapon of choice when you don't want to bring a Verglass to DPS. This is usually used to spread gas and electric to maximize synth deconstruct procs for more health orbs. Fire rate is extremely important, at just base 0.25, hence we double slotted it. The last slot is flex and can be galvanized multi-shot if you're using a rifle to DPS on your warframe, or split chamber if you're not. Terminal velocity is optional, but prime firestorm is highly recommended. Volklock shoots stupidly slow and is single target. The only reason to use it is for tenacious bond, reaching 50% critical chance on the weapon to activate the plus 1.2 times final crit damage bonus on your warframe loadout. Do keep in mind this also works on pseudo exalts. A single crit chance mod is enough, and pile on all four vigilante mods for a set bonus. Burst laser is not really mentioned today, but the main reason to bring it is because it is the only pistol companion weapon in the entire game. This means it can carry auger mods for you for shield gate builds if you're using a DPS pistol setup that cannot equip auger mods. One other thing about pet modding, just like everything else in the game, mod order hierarchy matters, from top left to top right then bottom left, to bottom right. While this is important for modding element combinations, which most of us know, this is even more important for pet modding because this determines ability hierarchy. Abilities are casted off a of first ability not on cooldown in the same order I listed earlier, so more important precept abilities should always be slotted higher in the hierarchy. Okay, let's get into the all different companion setups you can do. Since we just showcased Verglass building, we're gonna start with the companion DPS plus AoE priming on a Verglass Sentinel or MOA. This is for when all you want your companion to do is kill stuff, but also prime in an area. This can be done with any Sentinel or MOA. The important mods are Duplex Bond and Contagious Bond. This means cordon on the setup is unnecessary since this setup is not specific to Nautilus, which is also why I didn't put cordon in the top left slot. You'll have to decide for yourself where unique precepts of your chosen Sentinel or MOA fit in. Duplex Bond spawns up to 3 copies of your companion, lasting 30 seconds each. They're invulnerable, do not follow you, and independently aggro enemies. They're also considered completely unmodded on the companion, but carry over the fully modded companion weapon. This means they cannot activate any precepts or mods such as synth deconstructs. 
Clone kills do have a 50% chance to drop orbs though from the mod. Contagious Spawn also allows your main companion to spread viral procs since I was using a viral heat verglass. Do keep in mind that heat procs that carry over from Contagious Spawns do not carry the original damage and scaling of your first target. Contagious Spawn is only useful for spreading viral procs preemptively for free. Accelerated deflection and calculated redirection for better shield gate on your companion. Now, remember to actually bring Assault Molt so your main companion attacks. Manifold is only here to refresh Guardian Shield Gate, and Synth Deconstruct for more orbs from your main companion. Since I just used Nautilus as an example, the next one I'm going to showcase is an actual usage for Nautilus specifically. Manifold Bond cuts down cooldown of abilities when both you or your companion get kills on enemies afflicted with at least 3 status effects. So long as you can keep satisfying this condition, your companion can spam their abilities. We slot Cordon in the top left slot since we want Nautilus to spam this primarily for grouping, to substitute needing an actual grouping ability. Tenacious Bond is used with Vault Clock to easily grant your entire weapon loadout plus 1.2 times flat critical damage and offer faster companion revives on headshots. This is useful on anything that can crit, and since it's flat crit, helps weapons with, say, lower than 2 times base crit multiplier a lot. Assault Mode does not help a ton here, since Volklok shoots slowly but can still give minimal extra orb drops with Synth Deconstruct. Accelerated Deflection and Redirection for longer shield gate on Nautilus, since you really don't want it to die, since that prevents it from spamming grouping. Now if you want to use Hellstrom to prime instead, then drop Tenacious Bond as Flex, maybe for Animal Instinct. Next is Worm, for shield gate reset spam and status immunity. Mod order matters here, because companions cast an order of hierarchy for what's off cooldown. Guardian is what you want to spam since it refills 100% of shields when they break, but has a 30 second cooldown. Shield Charger increases shield max for better shield gate. Tenacious Bond is used with Volklok to easily grant your entire weapon loadout plus 1.2 times flat critical damage and offer faster companion revives on headshots. We have another flex slot, where I chose Momentous Bond for easier companion revives 18 seconds off timer when you kill an Xmas. Do make sure Vacuum is maxed and use Primed Regen. I just had capacity problems. Manifold Bond resets cooldown of Guardian and Negate on this build. Guardian is more important than Negate, but Negate blocks a single status effect and then goes on 5 seconds cooldown. So long as you keep killing, then that 5 seconds cooldown shouldn't really exist, and it's perfect for those without Prime Sure Footed or status immunity in Warframe base kits. Reinforced Bond is used because Worm is the only Sentinel that can reach over 1200 max shields by default without overshields for a permanent plus 60% fire rate to your entire loadout. For the next one, and an alternative option to Worm is Taxon, which does the exact same thing built in a similar way, except instead of access to negate for status block, you double down on shield resets with molecular conversion for even more shield gate spam. Damage inflicted by this ability is then converted into shields restored for your Warframe and can go into overshields. Guardian is once again top left slot since we want to make sure our shield reset is always the first priority when they break. Because Taxon cannot activate Reinforced Bond reliably, we chose to slot Assault Mode. If you're using Volklok, you can use Tenacious Bond for plus 1.2 times final crit damage to all weapons and faster companion revives on headshots. Alternatively, if you want your Taxon to prime a bit and use a Hellstrom for more health orbs. Do keep in mind to max out Primed Regen and Vacuum for comfort as I just lack the capacity. Our next one is Death Cube, and is a parallel to Panzer Volpophila since forever for better energy generation. Viral Quills spread like Seren Spores when you hit them, and anything tagged with Viral Quill satisfies requirements for Synth Deconstruct Pet Assists. Death Cube on the other hand has Energy Generator, where anything it touches counts as a Pet Assist, hence why we use a Hellstrom. This Death Cube both generates extra orbs via Energy Generator and Synth Deconstruct, and also extra priming in general for Condition Overload or Guncio builds via duplex bond copies of itself. Do keep in mind that clones cannot activate Energy Generator or Synth Deconstruct, however it still produces more AoE priming. Of course, max out Redirection, Primed Regen, and Vacuum. I have capacity issues. The free priming spam from clones in Hellstrom will also let Manifold constantly reset your Guardian Shield Gate cooldown. Ever want to see everything disarmed and primed around you? In comes our first Hound build. You can use any Hound, since Audits and Prospectuses can be used on any Hound so long as you have the mod. Do know that this Hound cannot reliably prime enemies for Condition Overload by itself. This is because Hound AI is stupid and isn't always with you and Repo Audit has a hard line of sight check. Repo Audit also has a 20 seconds cooldown. Manifold can cut this down a lot, but you will probably still want to bring an actual primer yourself. 
Synergize Prospectus can activate Archon Stretch on your Warframe, so that's also a small bonus. Manifold Bond allows Repo Audit and Synergize Prospectus to also force proc elements from your Hound weapon on cast. Repo Audit is by default magnetic, and Synergize Prospectus is electric. Manifold also grants a 2 of IPS from our chosen Hound weapon and also modded for Viral and Electric. I still modded Electric since it's better crowd control than Heat and will also stack on Repo Audit. Shattering Impact does not trigger an ability cast and only on Hound directly meleeing enemies. Because Repo Audit has a 20 seconds cooldown, I do not recommend using this Hound for condition overload setups if you refuse to use a primer weapon. Because if Repo Audit miscasts in a bad spot, well, now most enemies are not primed. You don't have a primer and you can't activate Manifold Bond on melee kills to reset Repo Audit. The main draw of Repo Audit is disarm spam when you bring your own primer. Priming is just bonus scaling. You can use Null Audit on this exact build instead to steal Eximus unit auras. The build will work very similarly, you just have a bit less priming and Eximus auras instead of disarms. Just pray you don't accidentally steal a snow globe aura to block your shots. Now, what if you do want to use a condition overload or gun CO setup without ever touching a primer? This is where Diriga comes in. Its precept, Arcoil, has only a 5 seconds cooldown. That means 2 manifold activations cut this to 0. Now, Arcoil also attacks 7 enemies at once and can also inherit force proc elements from Manifold Bond. All I did was mod on Viral and Electric and 4 Vigilante Mons for the said bonus. But now where Arcoil produces all 3 IPS, Viral and Electric for 5 stacks of unique effects for Condition Overload, or Gun CO. You prime more enemies than needed to fully reset Arcoil cooldown with each cast. And because it's always on your shoulder, it never misses or goes the wrong way, like a hound. Guardian is our second precept since it only goes on cooldown when triggered, therefore we want to put it after our coil, which is always spammed. Synth Deconstruct will proc always, since we're always priming enemies around us constantly for extra health orbs. Make sure to max out redirection, and we have a flex slot. If you bring Volklock, you can bring Tenacious Bond, or maybe Animal Instinct. Do not use the Electro Pulse precept, it sucks. Our 8th and final main showcase today is Helios. Now, do note there's an extra section after this about things likely to get patched, with Helios already dipping toes into it. Helios' main shtick is... It can armor strip with Deconstructor. Vicious Bond allows this armor strip to be AoE instead, so long as you tag those enemies with abilities that deal damage at some point. So AoE ability spam is nice for this. Momentous Bond is our flex slot for faster companion revives based off Xmas kills. Make sure to max out regen, redirection, and vacuum. We still run Manifold plus Guardian as a staple on almost all Sentinel builds for shield gate resets. Make sure to equip Assault Mode so your Helios actually attacks to strip. Now, the Deconstructor build is quite simple. Just attack speed, Viral Heat for status procs, Shattering Impact is no longer needed due to Vicious Bond stripping percent armor and also letting us do it in an AoE. Quick Return and Whirlwind allow it to hit faster, and as you can see, I don't usually use my Deconstructor for DPS. But now getting to the bugs. The first one is being from this Helios. You probably noticed my Helios attacking a lot faster than normal, which also results in faster armor strip. This is because of regen. For some reason, regen is massively improving the fire rate of your Helios by like 10 times faster. But it's not just that, this only happens if you mod Quick Return and Whirlwind on your Deconstructor. A mod that is supposed to grant faster revive is somehow multiplying attack speed. It's like as if it's reviving the glaive after it's fired. No, I'm not the first to report this, so don't get your panties in a bunch. There are tons of videos covering this interaction already. It's very likely to get patched, because there is literally no reason why Revive Speed mod would give your Helios 10 times attack speed, and that it also only works when Quick Return and Whirlwind are present. If you want to take this even further, you can even use Condition Overload and Primed Fever Strike for it to double his DPS. Now, since Vicious Bond requires ability damage to strip and the AoE is only 9 meters, then grouping tools are perfect. But do keep in mind, Helios cannot trigger hits properly on ragdolled enemies, so you want to minimize this when possible. This means Ensnare, which does not do damage, will not trigger Vicious Bond. However, Air Burst, Coil Horizon, and more importantly, a super low duration larva will. What I would recommend is using Ensnare Subsume and casting a damaging ability on the enemies as part of the innate kit since this bypasses the ragdoll problem. For example, Ensnare Vault. Just cast Shock on them and voila, AoE Armor Strip. Next one is also pretty known at this point, Mystic Bond. 
I'm uncertain if this one will get patched, more so because it isn't really a bug, but instead a massive oversight on DE's part. Mystic Bond triggers on companion ability casts. After 5 triggers of abilities that have cooldown, you can cast an ability for free. The problem is, what is considered an ability cast? It's shown most popular in Helmet Charger because each individual larva produced by Strain Set counts as an ability cast for some reason. That's right, each individual larva, and not when it hatches, but when it spawns on the body. You can hear the audio cue of this being casted. But them being persistent for some reason also trigger stacks. Now, this results in a free ability cast every 5 seconds or so, but that's not all. Many other things are considered ability casts. Assault mode, or any attack precept for sentinels and moas that makes your companion actually aggro something, is considered an ability cast, for some reason. So each time your pet decides to attack a new target, well, that's one Mystic Bond stack. Other Bond mods also count as triggers as well so long as they have a cooldown, which Manifold Bond can cut down to basically zero. What this means is, you can have pretty much almost permanent uptime on Mystic Bond activation for free ability casts every 2-3 to three seconds when you start combining a bunch of ability mods or in companion build with Manifold Bond. Emergence Dissipate was nerfed. This is even stronger than pre-nerf Emergence Dissipate. The likelihood of this remaining intact is extremely low because this is the exact kind of thing DE hates. They are most likely to tweak what is actually considered an ability cast or a cooldown on how many times Mystic Bond can interact in a time frame. Enjoy it while it lasts. Finally, the last one. Astral Bond. It can damage Eidolons. I don't think I need to get into more detail on this. This is the same Verglass DPS build as I showed at the start of the video that's used for normal content. The only difference is I dropped a mod on our Sentinel for Astral Bond, or your MOA. Your Verglass now destroys Eidolon shields faster than basically any hunter except the best speedrunners. It's pretty obvious why this will get patched, because, well, DE is known to patch every single way to damage Eidolon shields that isn't with your Operator. Yes, this one is also quite well known. No, I'm nowhere near the first person to post this. Enjoy this one while it lasts. That's it for our companion rework roundup today. That was a lot of them, and also some things to watch out for in case of patches in the future. Reminder that part 2 is coming, so interactions and synergies shown here are subject to change. Also, that Predizites, Volpophilas, Kubros, and Kavats will require their own testing, so that will come in a separate video in the future. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I've done with the Dagath update, pet rework, shield gate changes, and more. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, you don't want to miss out on any of that do you? And that'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!